The north and south poles of the earth are two enigmatic places full of great mysteries. In these areas of the planet, there are meteorological phenomena that do not occur anywhere else. Believe it or not, at the poles of the earth there are two huge icy walls that protect us from a dangerous threat that if unleashed, will cause the earth to spiral into another ice age. This sounds scary, right? But you might also be confused and not recognize what we are talking about now. So keep watching as we are about to uncover what these icy walls are and what exactly they protect us from. Join us today as we venture into a lesser known climate shattering phenomenon and what happens to Earth when it finally comes. Before we start click on that subscribe button and like this video as it's the best way to support this channel. The invisible wall of icy air that we mentioned earlier is actually an atmospheric phenomenon called the polar vortex. This is a large-scale persistent cyclone that is located in the polar areas of the Earth, and it is one of the most terrifying as it has claimed many lives throughout history. There are two polar vortices on Earth, one in the north and one in the south. Each polar vortex is divided into two main parts, the tropospheric polar vortex spins in the region of the atmosphere known as the troposphere, which extends 10 to 15 kilometers from the surface. This is where 75% of the atmosphere's total mass is located. Then we have the stratospheric polar vortex, which is above 50 kilometers. It is a technically separate weather phenomenon that has its own size, seasonal cycle, and influence on the global climate. At times, the air in high latitudes in the northern hemisphere break through the vortex and move out of its boundaries. But how can the icy air break out of the polar vortex? It is caused by something known as Rossby atmospheric waves. Rossby waves help transfer heat from the tropics toward the poles and cold air toward the tropics in an attempt to return atmosphere to balance. At the same time, Earth's rotation causes the atmosphere to rotate to the right as it moves in the northern hemisphere and to the left in the southern hemisphere, and this is what is known as the Coriolis force. Rossby waves are heavily influenced by this Coriolis force. A fluid moving from the equator toward the North Pole will be diverted to the east, and a fluid moving toward the equator from the north will be diverted to the west. This is one of the reasons hurricanes occur and why hurricanes spin in different directions, depending on whether they originate from the north or the south. The two polar vortices are permanently rotating in the same direction as the Earth's rotation, and the winds can reach speeds of up to 240 km per hour. Here's a reminder that winds from 120 km per hour are already considered hurricanes. It is truly impressive to know that there are cyclones eternally spinning at the two poles of the Earth. But the real question to ask ourselves is, how can these cyclones exist, and why do they never stop? The difference in temperature is the straightforward answer to those questions. Keep in mind that because the Earth revolves on itself, the amount of sunlight it receives from the Sun is not uniform, with the planet's equator constantly receiving more of it. The air in the atmosphere immediately above the equator warms up more than the air at the poles due to receiving more heat. This results in low pressure, whereas high pressure happens if the air cools. The Earth's thermodynamics are responsible for this. Because cold air takes up less space, when a mass of air cools, it can compact and occupy a smaller area. Because they occupy a smaller space, more air particles can be concentrated there, adding mass and raising the pressure there. On the other hand, hot air takes up more space, the particles separate, and there are less particles as a result, which lowers the pressure in that location. In conclusion, hot air creates low pressure while cold air causes high pressure. Now, how is all of this related to the polar vortex? Well, since the air at the equator will almost always have a lower pressure than the air at the poles, the cold air from the polar vortex will almost always seek to move towards the equator because there is more space there. If it is so dangerous as it seems, then how have we protected ourselves from the polar vortex so far? Remember the invisible walls of air we spoke about at the beginning of the video? 
The polar night jet or polar jet stream is the fast-flowing air currents very close to the poles and are the invisible walls protecting us from polar vortices. Jet streams can start, stop, split into two or more parts, combine into a single stream, or flow in multiple directions, including the opposite direction of the rest of the jet. The polar night jet is the jet stream that bounds the vortex at the North Pole. It specifically confines the stratospheric polar vortex, keeping it under control during the polar night, the coldest time of the year for the North. Here in the winter, the sun never appears in the sky at all, resulting in even colder temperatures. A deeper pressure difference between the air near the pole and the air farther south is produced by this colder temperature, which enhances the forces that produce the polar night jet. As a result, during the coldest season of the year, this freezing air is typically effectively contained within the vortex. However, this does not always hold true. There are things that can disrupt a jet stream, which we will talk about shortly. When subtropical jet streams flow from the equator toward the poles, they collide head-on with the polar jet stream. When two huge air masses like these meet head-on, they don't mix but rather collide, and this causes both to rise or fall and then return to where they came from. This way, the polar vortex is kept restricted to the pole, making it impossible for it to escape. Our biggest defenders are the jet currents that circulate over the entire world. Without them, the polar vortex would come out more frequently from its region and would bring waves of extreme cold to the northern countries. Although jet streams keep us safe from polar vortices, it is now beginning to be observed that polar vortices often break up and leave their regions, especially in the northern hemisphere. These events are increasing mainly due to climate change and global warming. Jet streams are the invisible wall that protects us from the threat of ice, but this wall weakens if the planet's temperatures change. The upcoming El Nino weather phenomenon in 2023 is supposed to drive temperatures to record-breaking numbers and this will most definitely have an impact on the path the jet stream takes. Once the jet stream starts deviating, it will rock back and forth causing the polar night jet to roam around the Earth, reaching a point where there is a breach. No longer contained, Arctic wind moves south and meets warmer and warmer air, and pushes faster and faster south to attempt to balance the gradient. The entire jet stream then collapses and suddenly reorients itself, traveling down the planet so that regions like Europe and America, usually safe on the warm temperate side of the polar night jet, suddenly find themselves in the heart of the polar vortex. The polar vortex can reach extremely low temperatures, down to minus 50 degrees Fahrenheit, which is why they are so dangerous. At the end of January 2019, a significant area of the United States and Canada experienced a severe cold wave. It is now recognized that this outbreak of cold air from the Arctic were brought on by a weakened polar vortex. Hundreds of colleges, universities, and other institutions were closed in the affected areas after the U.S. National Weather Service issued a warning. People were warned not to venture outside because it was possible to freeze in just 10 minutes at these temperatures, but in the end, about 21 Americans alone lost their lives to severe frostbite. It's suspected that Europe was also affected by the polar vortex. For instance, the winter floods of 2013 and 2014 in the United Kingdom are attributed to the polar vortex that brought intense cold to the United States and Canada. Likewise, throughout history, the polar vortex has brought waves of intense cold that cost many people's lives. Although these events are still not very significant, if we do not care for our planet, the jet streams will stop protecting us. If things go on as they are, our protective wall may entirely collapse in the future many years from now, and at that time, the planet Earth will enter a new ice age. Over time, the global temperature anomalies will eventually correct themselves, and the jet stream will go back to where it was before. It's important to note that the North experiences some type of jet stream disruption six times every ten years. Over the course of your lifetime, 
You'll probably witness a lot more of these phenomena if you live in the Northern Hemisphere. But you are most likely safer in the South. The southern polar jet stream has only ever broken down in the same way as the northern one twice in recorded history. The polar vortex found in Antarctica also undergoes the same changes as the one in the north, the difference being that the one in the south is much more stable. This is because the surface landmass of Antarctica is separated from the rest of the world by the southern ocean. The temperatures of this ocean keep Antarctica and the southern polar vortex isolated. However, it has been seen that it can also break and bring cold waves to the countries near the South Pole. In Australia, the polar vortex, known there as a polar gust or polar plunge, is a cold front that pulls an air from Antarctica, bringing showers, snow, blizzards, winds, gusty ice, and hail in southeastern parts of the country, including Victoria, Tasmania, the southeast coast of South Australia and the southern half of New South Wales. For the time being, the repercussions of climate change are starting to be felt in some regions of the world. But we still have time to continue researching these fascinating phenomena and in doing so, come to a better understanding of how to live more harmoniously with our planet and our role within it. What are your thoughts on the polar vortex? Leave your opinion in the comments section below. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.